Hi, I'm Alan, and you're seeing me in visible light, which is only a tiny portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. We can't see the other parts with our eyes. Hi, I'm Alan, and I'm being imaged in infrared light, which is lower energy, longer wavelength than visible light. So why are you bright yellow? Since we can't see infrared light, the camera assigns false color to the image. Most objects emit light at an energy depending on their temperature. My body is warmer than my surroundings, so I emit at higher energy, shorter wavelength. But I'm cool enough that this emission is in the infrared part of the spectrum. You know, the James Webb Space Telescope is designed to observe in infrared wavelengths just longer than visible wavelengths. It'll observe things that we can't detect in visible light. Yeah, it's looking for infrared sources like planets as well as shorter wavelength sources like distant galaxies that have been redshifted into the infrared part of the spectrum due to the expansion of the universe. As we heard in the previous conversation, spectra of galaxies, supernova, and other distant objects are redshifted according to their distance and the rate at which the universe is expanding. The James Webb will be sensitive to and be able to measure these subtle variations. Let's take a look at what redshift means and how redshift affects the measurements that astronomers will take. This colorful image is what astronomers call a hydrogen absorption spectrum. What interesting features do you notice? The dark lines that you see show the absence of certain wavelengths of light. They are produced when white light passes through cool hydrogen gas and these specific wavelengths are absorbed by the gas. If we observe hydrogen in a relatively close galaxy that is moving away from us, how do you predict this hydrogen absorption spectrum might be different? You'll notice that all the lines moved towards the red end of the spectrum. This is called redshift. Redshift describes a change in the wavelength of light towards longer wavelengths when the source of the light is moving away from us. The greater the velocity of the source, the greater the redshift. You might wonder what the spectrum looks like for an even more distant galaxy. Will it be different from the close galaxy? These lines shifted a lot. What happened to the red line? It was shifted all the way into the near-infrared part of the spectrum. Infrared light shifted from shorter wavelengths in this way is one of the things the James Webb Space Telescope is searching for. So what do you think we can learn by comparing the spectra of closer galaxies and more distant galaxies? The farther away a galaxy is, the faster it is moving away, which is evidence that space is expanding. Understanding redshift is important for interpreting and understanding the data that James Webb will collect from the light of the first stars and the formation and evolution of distant galaxies. The James Webb will also search for infrared sources from for example, exoplanets, to begin to answer questions on the origins of life. We can demonstrate how infrared observations can access new information and how they differ from observations in visible light. We have here a coil of wire connected to a source of electricity. Let's turn off the lights and observe the wire in both visible and infrared light. The glow you see right now in infrared is radiation from the room. In a moment, we're going to run a current through the wire. What do you think you will see? As we run current through the wire, it heats up and glows in infrared light. As the current is increased, the temperature rises and the light shifts to higher energies and intensities. Eventually, the coil is hot enough to also glow in visible light. Let's pause here and talk about what we see. What do you notice in the background? We can see the reflection of visible light in the background, but we also see a reflection in infrared light. In fact, the James Webb Space Telescope uses a large mirror array to focus reflections of infrared light on the detector. You may have noticed another image of the coil in infrared. That was an artifact from the response of the camera to the change in visible light. You'll see it again in a moment when we turn the current off. When we turn off the current, the coil cools and the visible light quickly goes out. However, with our infrared camera, we can still see that the coil is hot long after it stops glowing and visible. 
This is why infrared observations are useful in astronomy. They allow us to observe objects that we are not able to see in visible light. An infrared telescope, like the James Webb, would not work well on Earth. One issue is that the telescope components, as well as the atmosphere, would be warm enough to contaminate the infrared signal. Another issue is that even though it is transparent to visible light, the atmosphere is opaque to portions of the infrared spectrum. The James Webb Space Telescope is finally ready to launch. The data it collects will help researchers both worldwide and at Purdue learn more about galaxies, star formation, exoplanets, and the nature of the universe.